guys, it's Haley, and welcome to another bookish video. Today I am starting a thriller vlog. Yeah, we're going back to my roots. We are going to be reading some thrillers today. Mostly new release, but a couple backlist titles thrown in there because they piqued my interest. So here is the stack of books I'm going to be reading from. Secluded Cabin Sleep 6 by Lisa Unger. Neighborhood Watch by Sarah Rita. Murder in the Family by Kara Hunter, and No One Needs to Know by Lindsay Cameron. But before we get into the vlog, I do wanna let you know about the sponsor of today's video, which is Magic Mind. If you've never heard me talk about Magic Mind before, they make these amazing little productivity shots, which come in the cutest packaging and taste so good. They are designed to give you a sharper mind, less stress, and steady energy throughout your day. It's a great alternative to caffeine. You can get a monthly subscription, which I have here, and I've been drinking for the past few days, as you can see, and I will be drinking them throughout this vlog. I really like them. You can take them in a bunch of different ways like obviously they're designed to be really convenient like you can just take them as a shot which is what I'll do today but I've also made like matcha lattes with them I've combined them with coffee before I've even put them in overnight oats and it's really good and they are running a really exciting campaign right now for the new year where you can get an entire month of your subscription completely free so obviously I will have that offer linked down below you can use my code Hughes 20 and now I'm gonna take my magic mind before I go about my day and there we go and y'all this really works it's the power of matcha adaptogens nootropics all this amazing stuff they have some great ingredients in there like the l-theanine is more of a time release caffeine so you don't crash throughout the day so I'm gonna go to work but we're gonna throw it back to earlier this morning and past Haley is gonna give you a little reading update. Hello vlog. We are starting out with No One Needs to Know by Lindsay Cameron, which I started last night. And I got such a huge chunk into this book last night. It was so hard to put down. This is exactly what I've been craving. I've been looking for just like mindless, salacious, rich people drama. And that is exactly what this is giving me. We are following the perspective of three moms on the elite Upper East Side of New York City, which I love books set in New York. And these three moms are just like catty from the word go. They all have their own flaws, I guess, and things that they're dealing with, which is further complicated by this app called Urban Myth. And Urban Myth is basically like Yik Yak, if you know about Yik Yak, where it's confined to this very narrow radius around the user. It's all completely anonymous and people can just post whatever kind of hot takes they want on there. People in the Upper East Side are either using it as a way to leak their friends' secrets and get that off their chest or a way to confess and leak their own secrets. So people are literally telling on themselves on this little adult Yik Yak app. It is so crazy. And we are just following the drama that's unfolding, the secrets and lies that apparently will lead to murder because we got a sneak peek of that in the first chapter. As I said, I am a third of the way through and the best description that I can give of this book is it's like Gossip Girl, but we're following the parents, like the uber rich parents who are trying to balance all their kids' stuff instead of following the like more romance heavy dynamics of the kids in these families. I love the media aspects. Like at the end of every chapter or every other chapter, there is a little section where you can see the like top trending posts on Urban Myth for that week. And it is just so salacious and so funny. This is just mindless. I'm reading it so fast. And there have already been a couple shocking reveals. Like what I just read before I went to bed last night, I was like, if I don't put this book down right now and just cut myself off, I'm gonna stay up all night. And I could not do that because I had to get up early this morning. I wanna get a workout in before work today, which I, I've i been just kind of struggling to be totally real, uh, struggling with my body image, struggling with moving my body. When you deal with like 
chronic pain, chronic illness, it can feel like your body is just not capable of doing things. And I was kind of being gentle with myself with that narrative, like, okay, my body isn't capable, I'm in pain, that doesn't mean that I have to go work out. But I feel like I overcorrected with that gentleness and now it's turning into an excuse. Like, I don't wanna limit myself in the way where it's like, I'm telling myself my body isn't capable and that's turning into a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's this whole thing. If you deal with it, then you know the like sinister back and forth that your brain can get you into. Basically, I'm just trying to figure out a way that I can go to the gym and move my body and work with my horrifying endometriosis and PCOS pain that I have pretty much every day. I'm gonna go do that and when I get back, I cannot wait to pick up this book again. It has been a few hours, but I successfully got everything done that I wanted to do this morning. I was so happy that I was able to move my body, eat a meal, get ready, and I also got to the 50% mark of No One Needs to Know, and I'm still really, really liking it. This is just exactly what I needed. If you are in the mood for rich people drama, this is for you. There was another massive twist and I don't know, this just gives me like good energy. It's more empowering or at least like the female characters in this book feel more real and strong and empowered than other like domestic thrillers that I've read in the past. Like yes, they're very flawed women, but they do seem to be strong. Like the entire story is not just about a cheating spouse and the wife is sitting around like wondering what to do. Yes, there is like salacious cheating drama in here, but I just think the way that everything is being handled, these women seem a lot more real and a lot less damsel in distress housewife, which is a lot of domestic suspense novels in my opinion. So I'm really liking it. I can't wait to get more into it later, but right now I'm going to work. So I will see you after. Okay, I'm back home from work and I'm just chilling reading. I have to say, I never thought a scene of a woman sitting in a bank could be so thrilling. <laughs> but my heart, I'm literally sitting here, my heart is racing. I'm like, please let it go through. Like, please let it go through. Oh my God, there's so much at stake. Like. <laughs> It's so ridiculous, just the minutia of these people's little lives because it's so meaningless and it's so just like, <laughs> it's so fun to get into. It doesn't feel heavy at all and I'm just having a real good thrilling time. vlog and it is much later after dinner but I did get a good chunk into no one needs to know I only have about 50 pages left but I have to go do my book club live show so unfortunately I have to pause my reading for right now but I'm still really really liking it I was definitely surprised by a few things, but I don't think they were like seamlessly executed, if that makes sense. Like, I feel like the author was almost confusing herself because there were a few things that were just like a little muddy and she was trying to be intentionally deceptive and it did get me, but I feel like she got got too. There was one paragraph where she was trying to talk about someone's kid and she used the name of the other person's kid. So just like little mistakes like that that are kind of getting on my nerves, but it's not 
too much to take away from my enjoyment of the book. It goes really, really fast and I'm still really enjoying it. So I will probably pick this up during sprints after our little book club discussion. Hello, vloggity vlog. We are on sprints now. We finished our little book discussion. It was so fun. We went on way too many tangents about Harry Styles, about maladaptive dreaming, about Neville Papperman, just about a lot of things, okay? We always have fun here. But now we're sprinting and I'm with Deja and Aspen, literally my two favorite people on the face of this earth to gab with. And in our first sprint, I finished up, no one needs to know, y'all. This had me on the edge of my seat. It was so good. All the red herrings really got me. Like this author really faked me out. I thought she was losing those threads, but I fear she had them in her grasp. This is reality TV as a book. It's just so like not meaningful. But then the end I was like, wait, is she saying something? Should we let her cook? Like it was kind of good. So I ended up rating it four stars just because I was gonna give it 3.5, but it had one of my favorite tropes at the end. And obviously we're following a bunch of women in this book. So what I'm about to say is not a spoiler. You can fight me in the comments. I don't care. This is not a spoiler. This book I would call good for her. And I'm not gonna tell you which her it's good for, but one of them really gets their vengeance. So I will leave it with that. I really like this thriller. I can't believe I've never heard anyone talk about it. Four stars, so good. If you're a rich people drama girl, you're gonna eat it up like I did and read it in under 24 hours. Next up, I asked on Sprints which book I should start and they said Murder in the Family by Kara Hunter. So this is a media heavy book. And when I say media, I don't just mean like, oh, we got some emails, we got some text, like, no, do you see what I mean? Like, it is very, very media heavy. There were like pictures of suspects in here and like posters, like missing posters, like texts, like very interesting pieces of media. So I feel like this is gonna be a really fast, really good read and good for sprints. So this is supposedly a murder mystery. It's giving like Knives Out where somebody died in this rich family, somebody killed them. And the reader's goal is to figure out who died and who killed them before it's revealed in the book. So it's kind of like a little fun interactive game. The only feedback that I've heard about this book is like, it's unpredictable because it's so absolutely bonkers and ridiculous. So I'm going to be making the most bonkers theories in my head as I'm reading this, seeing if I can solve it. And I think that's gonna be really fun. So I'm gonna start this one, get back to sprints and let you know what I'm thinking. vlog it is much later i'm so tired we just got off sprints it's about midnight and i am a little over a quarter of the way through murder in the family i'm really liking it i love the media inserts it's like a very stormy night we actually are on like a severe thunderstorm watch right now and it's been just like very atmospheric and cozy to read a murder mystery while it's storming outside and this is not just your typical like rich people drama murder mystery it's actually told through a netflix documentary like reality show docu-series so it's really interesting i like that kind of angle and we are kind of going through the evidence of a case that's been cold for 20 years and it's literally being told like it's 
a documentary like all the family members are coming back after 20 years all these experts are gathered in a panel to like re-go over the evidence and see if we can find out new stuff that has emerged over you know technology and all this stuff over the last 20 years and i'm trying to figure it out totally coming up blank but it's really interesting i'm just simply falling asleep as i'm reading because i'm so tired so i'm gonna go to bed and probably pick this back up in the morning Hello vlog, I have had just a nice relaxing morning. I laid in bed with my coffee, read my book, and then I went to the gym. I took my time getting ready. I love mornings like this. And I got over halfway through Murder in the Family. It is so easy to read with all of the different media elements. It just goes so fast. But I am noticing like if this was just a narrative story, if it wasn't told with the structure, I think I would be kind of bored. Some of the elements that come through, some of the um, experts' perspectives, I just think are a little bit boring. Like I would rather follow the family drama more from the family's perspective than these experts. Sometimes they just have like a cold clinical way of talking about something and it is a very stark contrast to what I was reading before, you know, like just juicy drama. It's definitely not that. Um, it has a true crime feel. So if you want something that reads like true crime, but is obviously fictional, I think this would be a good option for you. Something that did rub me the wrong way though, is within this fictional story, they're kind of like comparing this case to real cases. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't really like that, especially like John Benet Ramsey's case was mentioned, and it's like, can we please let that little girl rest? Like, can we please stop talking about her and picking her apart? Like, I just, I don't know. It gives me a weird feeling when people just obsess, obsess, obsess about real life victims. And I know it might come from a place of trauma and wanting to, you know, protect yourself and not wanting that to happen to you or somebody you love, but it just feels out of place, especially in a fictional story. And I find that a little bit ironic because there is some commentary in here about the ethics of true crime. So I'm just kind of wondering if that's something the author missed or maybe is doing intentionally to try to pair with that commentary. I'm not sure, but um, I'm not just like blindly loving this and having the fun time that I was with the last thriller. Uh, it is going well though. It's an easy read. Like I said, absolutely no predictions as to who the killer is at this point. It's really confounding. It's a confounding case. I see why it was cold for 20 years. So I will probably get back into this later, but for now, I got all ready because me and Deja are about to film the podcast. I'm so excited. If you haven't checked out our new podcast yet, I will link it down below. We have a video version of it as well. If you're not a podcast girly, we're available on Spotify and Apple Podcasts if you like a podcast, but if you'd rather watch the video version, we do have that available on YouTube. They're all unlisted links that you can access through our Patreon. And our Patreon is only $2 a month. That is literally 50 cents per episode. And we're splitting it between the two of us. So like, we're not trying to turn a massive profit here, but it's fun and we want it to be worthwhile. So I will link our Patreon and our podcast on Spotify and Apple Podcasts down below. It's just Deja and I talking about everything from books to pop culture. We have weekly segments that we do. We have little games that we play play and it's really fun. I'm really glad that some of y'all are DMing me and telling me uh, like in the discord and stuff that y'all are liking it. It makes me so happy because this is just something that came from like pure passion. Me and Deja were having these long talks and we were like, mm, it'd be kind of fun if we put it out there for y'all. So I'm so glad y'all are enjoying it. And I'm so excited to film another episode. I'm gonna go do that and I will see you later. Hello 
vloggy vlog. We just had a little night on the town. We went downtown just to like try this little burger pop up, which Cameron literally said it was the best burger in Austin. I kind of agree, but it pissed me off because they wouldn't let me take off the pickles. Like the, the it's called not a damn chance burger. And their whole thing is like, if you try to customize it and mess with their settings that they have on their regular burger, they say not a damn chance. And I kind of didn't believe it. I was like, they're bluffing. No, they would not let me take off the pickles. So that was kind of annoying, but the burger was really good. And we had like just a little drinky downtown. Um, I didn't take B-roll because we were on a date like it wasn't gonna be intrusive like that. But now we're home and we ordered crumble, which I'm so excited. And I had crumble cash. So I literally had to pay $2 to get cookies delivered to my door. Like that's iconic. And we're gonna watch House of Wax, the horror movie with Paris Hilton from 2005. Yeah, I'm extremely ready for that. And Mochi, you're gonna love it. You're gonna love it. Are you ready to watch? Hello vloggy vlog. I have had a very relaxing morning just kind of starting slow. I was laying in bed and I finished Murder in the Family. I do have to say there was no way that I could have ever guessed the outcome of this book. Like maybe but it took so many twists and turns along the way that even if i would have ended up on the right answer i think i would have dropped it in lieu of something else because of the amount of twists and turns that it took i thought it was really fun i could see a netflix documentary kind of like playing out like this so if you want something that reads like that this is definitely going to be for you i did think it was a little weird a little jarring that this book tried to have commentary on some of the true crime related stuff but at the same time almost felt like it was perpetuating some of that stuff that inconsistency sat a little weird with me but just the plot in itself and the actual murder mystery i thought was done really well i think all the reviews that i heard calling it ridiculous were just referring to like the amount of times it will twist and turn and you can't predict it um but i don't think it was like that far out of left field i don't think it was that unrealistic of a answer to the crime it wasn't that deep i will probably forget about this book in a few months but it was a fun time and it was a very unique format which i appreciated thinking i'll be nice to it and give it a three Point five because I didn't have too many qualms with it and it honestly just wasn't that deep for me so 3.5 out of 5 stars for murder in the family and moving on to my next book of the vlog I have secluded cabin sleeps 6 by Lisa Unger this is a very straightforward locked door mystery where a group of I believe like six people yeah three couples are renting like an Airbnb this like secluded cabin <laughs> would you ever guess and they start getting picked off one by one we are trying to figure out who's the murderer what's happening i've not heard the best things about this but i like the vibes and i want to make sure that i read this when it's still semi cold outside let's see how cold it is it's 66 and that is pretty damn cold for texas <laughs> i would guess in the next month we're gonna be back up in the 80s and 90s so i gotta get this one read or it's just going to be sitting on my shelves for another year until next winter. So I went ahead and found the audiobook through my library and I'm going to go ahead and start that at the gym. But first, I got to take my magic mind before I go to the gym because you know I need that little energy boost. I don't like pre-workout. It actually makes my stomach hurt really bad. So I really like taking magic mind as an alternative. It doesn't upset my stomach at all. 
And I really do notice a difference when I take Magic Mind consistently in the amount of energy that I have, especially at the gym, but really just generally throughout the day. So let's go run. Hey vlog, I am back from the gym and I have a reading update. I am 25% of the way through Secluded Cabin Sleeps 6. The audiobook is really good, actually. I love the audiobook narrator, but it is quite slow. We're following a lot of perspectives, which usually makes a mystery go a lot faster for me than just one or two, but I don't know. The perspectives don't feel meaningful. It just kind of feels like we're getting a peek into everybody's head and getting to know none of them with any depth. It also just kind of feels like the same thriller tropes over and over, everyone's suspecting their spouse of cheating, there's family secrets, family drama. I will say the family dynamics are interesting for me. I love like screwed up family stuff. So I do like those elements and I like the isolated wintry setting. There's a storm that's about to come in. I like that. Um, this is also a good read for someone who lives in a place where it gets wintry but not snowy because they keep talking about this storm but it's like a big winter hurricane uh, that's coming in. So I think we're set in Georgia and Florida in this book. If you are looking for a seasonal reader type of book that is set in the winter but also set in a warmer climate, which I am always looking for that, this might be a good option for you. I am such a seasonal reader so I'm liking that this description is kind of perfect for the weather that we're getting in Texas right now. Uh, but nothing really super special other than that is standing out to me. Other than <laughs> I will say there are a couple characters in this book that are wonderful candidates for somatic experiencing. I would love to have them as clients because they have this beautiful body awareness. That is one thing that I've really noticed about Lisa Unger's writing is she has like a very specific lens where she will let you know what is happening in all of her characters nervous systems whether it's like a memory that's coming up for them a feeling in their body an emotion she's very descriptive with the experience of her characters i just wish we knew a little bit more about their personalities and what makes them them because i only feel like i have a profile of a couple of the characters and they just feel like very flat and stereotypical so that's my initial impression of secluded cabin sleeps six. Cameron and I have some errands to run today. So we're going to go do that, do some, you know, just like Sunday reset things around the house. And when I get into more of this book, I will let you know. We got that brown bread. We got Charlie Puth playing. What could be better? Hello vlog. It is so much later. Uh, it is the next day. I was gonna say the next morning, but it's literally 2 p.m. because 
We ran errands last night, then we got a little sidetracked, okay? We went to the Cheesecake Factory, we went to Barnes & Noble, we came home and watched movies. Like, it was not what we were supposed to do. So, I had a lot of errands to run this morning that I didn't think I was gonna have to do. I've been running around. I literally just sat down with my coffee. I made a s'mores latte with this, like, marshmallow cold foam. It's, like, pre-done, so I don't even have to use my little thing. It comes in, like, a whipped cream thing but it's latte foam it's really cool if your grocery store has one highly suggest it while i've been running my errands i have been listening to the audiobook of secluded cabin sleeps six and i am 75 percent of the way through so i've gotten a massive chunk in i've read half the book since i last talked to you and honestly i don't think it's bad like Around the 50% mark, the pace really picked up. We we're getting this perspective from the past and my mind was just reeling trying to figure out how it fits in. And now even at almost 80%, I'm still not quite sure how it fits in. So it's eluding me a little bit. I keep thinking I know, but then it's like on the tip of my tongue and I can't get it. It's kind of good, but do be aware there is some really, really triggering material in here. I don't know, this just sounds like an Agatha Christie-esque, like, ooh, locked door mystery. No, 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 no. The perspective from the past and a lot of the material in here is really dark and really triggering. Also, I'm really liking Lisa Unger's writing style. I think I just really like her. Confessions on the 745, I did not like at all. So I feel like that just kind of put me off from her. But the more that I read, the more that I realize I actually do really like her writing style, especially the way that she like talks about her character's experiences, which I think I talked about at my 25% update, but I'm pretty much really liking it now. It's not like the best thriller I've ever read. I'm not like, oh my God, I have to read it, but it's definitely not something that I'm like passively listening to while I'm running errands, like a fluffy little romance audiobook. Sometimes I'll do that, but this I'm actively listening, so... I don't know. We will see how the ending is. Hello vloggity vlog. I am back from work and I'm done with my book. I am going to give Secluded Cabin Sleeps 6 3.5 out of 5 stars. I was going to give this a 3 but the ending was kind of good. Like there were some good discussions brought up. There was some commentary like I can tell Lisa Unger has been to therapy. Like this queen has weekly sessions. Like she has learned things and she is applying it to her characters. And I really do appreciate that. I think that's like the thing that stands out about this book. But unfortunately, I didn't really care. I did not find myself connected to the characters at all. And as a very character driven reader, that is just not gonna work for me to get like a four star or above. I have to like at least care a little bit. So while there were like good discussions going on and the trauma rep was great and the discussions, I couldn't feel the impact of that because I didn't care about the characters. Like it didn't hit me the way that I wanted it to. I can tell that objectively the twists were unpredictable and interesting and the characters were dynamic and brought up really good pieces of commentary, but it just didn't resonate because I didn't feel deeply connected to the story. So I was going to give it a three, but because I liked the informed emotional family dynamic conversation so much, I bumped it up to a 3.5. I don't think this is a bad thriller by any means. I feel like the other reviews that I read beforehand were maybe a little harsh or just like by people who have dissimilar taste to me. But yeah, I think it's a little slow to start and then I think it gets good, but I just didn't feel connected to it. Doesn't mean that you won't like it though. I did like the atmosphere though all the way through. That was a really big strength. And now we are on to the last book of the vlog, which is an arc that I have of Neighborhood Watch by Sarah Rita. Oh, this doesn't come out until April. Okay, I thought this came out in February. Well, whatever, whatever. I will read this super early arc <laughs> and review it for you guys so you know if you wanna add this to your list for April. Um, this is another rich people drama domestic thriller. That is just what I'm craving right now. This says, a killer terrorizes the morally bankrupt residents of an upscale neighborhood, leading them to turn to and turn on one another to survive. So after the string 
string of murders rips through the neighborhood, suspicions abound as new secrets come to light. More and more bodies are taken away from the neighborhood and it becomes clear that the killer is selecting each and every victim, specifically picking off the most shallow and wasteful of the lot. Most of the neighbors just scatter like cockroaches, but a small group of neighborhood ladies team up to solve their local mystery and restore peace in the subdivision, even if the killer is among them. So this is kind of giving me like rich people drama murder mystery meets don't fuck with cats. If you know that documentary, that is my favorite documentary of all time. It's about how like this little group of at home like armchair detectives literally solved this murder. And not only that, but they were trying to warn the police before the murder even happened. Like, a, this man's gonna kill somebody and the police just didn't listen. So I'm hoping this little group of ladies just slays the day and I hope it's gonna be like delicious, scandalous drama as well. I'm gonna get into this and I will let you know when I do, but for now, I gotta cook some dinner and I'm making my favorite dinner tonight, so I'm very happy about that. It is my Borson pasta. Every single time I put this in a vlog that I'm making it, somebody asks for the recipe. It's real, real simple, okay? It's like a TikTok viral recipe. You put a thing of borsin cheese in a pan. Then you put some tomatoes, garlic, and shallots in that pan. And then you put it in the oven. 375, 400 for 25, 30 minutes. Let it get all bubbly. You make some pasta. You make some chicken. You put the pasta, the chicken, and the borsin mixture from the pan all in a pot together. You mix it all up. You might put some pasta water to thin it out a little bit. You might add some spinach, some kale, some arugula, and some Parmesan, and really that's it. I kind of make it a different way every single time, but it's never failed me. So I'm about to go make my dinner. I'm gonna pour a glass of wine, and we're gonna get into the drama. vlog it is the next morning i am up again to go to the gym i'm like keeping my little routine i'm very proud of myself especially after my late night last night karen and i actually stayed up so late watching the wreck movies which are spanish horror films that are like found footage vibe they were so crazy and then on top of that i stayed up reading neighborhood watch and I actually got about a third of the way through. I'm a little over a hundred pages in. I'm not loving this book. I don't know. It's kind of interesting because it's really kitschy and campy and you can tell that like the author is just making fun of these really wealthy people, but it's not done with any subtlety. Like it's very, very heavy handed, which I don't like as much. I feel like there was a similar energy to the first book that I read for this vlog, but it was very subtle and clever. This is almost giving like over the top, shoving it down my throat, like caricature. I will say I do appreciate the diversity in this book. There are multiple characters that are LGBTQIA. There are multiple characters of color, which you don't see a lot in these little domestic dramas. And usually in these books, if there's one person of color, that is used as a plot device to move the story along, uh, which there's a little bit of that in here. But overall, the characters just feel so weirdly stereotypey that I feel like I can't really care about them or get close to them. Like 
it just feels so ridiculous like i have no emotional attachment at all whatsoever whereas i feel like in uh no one needs to know i wasn't like obsessed with the characters but at least i felt for them i was like invested in the drama and i'm just not here like gotta be between like eight and ten different perspectives that we've gotten so far we're just like bouncing around to all the different people in the neighborhood um as these murders happen and seeing kind of their take seeing if they're a suspect seeing if they're suspicious whatever i'm having a fun time in theory but there are a lot of things i'm not liking about it hopefully as we get into you know the more meat of the story it will be better but yeah that's kind of how i'm feeling about it all right i'm gonna take my magic mind so i can wake up a little bit and get myself ready for another morning at the gym and i will let you know when i'm back and i have more thoughts on neighborhood watch I'm trying so hard not to be crazy right now, y'all. I'm trying so hard not to go pearl mode. Oh, okay. I thought this was gonna be a thriller vlog, but apparently anything I ever do has to be imbued with some type of extreme horror commentary. If you're sick of this shit, I understand. Skip it, skip it. You can tap it, tap, 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 and get the fuck out of here. Here's the thing. Why every time we turn around is there a new blatant instance of misogyny and extreme horror that nobody wants to talk about? I feel like I'm glitching. Nobody wants to talk about it. This morning, me and Deja posted our Gabin It Up episode about extreme horror and the issues there. Just thinking, oh my god, we were so late to this party, like nobody's probably gonna want to listen to that and then another situation happens on the day like what are the fucking chances a million because this always fucking happens because it's always some type of misogyny with these men like they write violence against women because they're misogynists because they're misogynists bro allegedly in my opinion <laughs> they're misogynists and their readers are misogynists and they don't want to denounce misogyny because then they lose their readers <laughs> The whole system is rigged. Sorry. I'm just having a little tad, a little bit of a little tiny little girly breakdown. Anyway, I read like another hundred pages of Neighborhood Watch yesterday. I'm feeling okay about it. I'm feeling lukewarm about it. I'm actually less annoyed with it. The more that I get into the book, I'm like kind of giving into the atmosphere. But yeah, I just can't. I just can't deal with what's happening right now so i'll probably put the vlog on pause for a second um we have podcast recording today so i'm literally about to go rant with deja but that's what i have planned for the rest of my day i will probably record the podcast do my patreon movie night and finish neighborhood watch and just leave this vlog because i'm so dysregulated it's not going to be a good fun time if i'm updating it in this state so i will be back to you i just wanted to give you context as to like why the vlog skips days if that ends up happening because i'm getting trauma flashbacks all right guys see you later <laughs> hello vlog it is a couple days later and i am i'm fine <laughs> i've recovered emotionally i just can't deal with these people anymore get me out get me out of the splutter punk community i'm literally i'm i'm i'm, I'm, I'm not on the bars i'm trying to get out and now i'm fine and i have an update i'm actually done with neighborhood watch feel very mixed things about this book <sighs> it was a fun little mystery it was rich people drama it was dumb it was stereotypical it was just really giving nothing special nothing that we haven't seen before i guess the killer 
very early on and i was like there's no way that i'm right like all the red herrings are pointing to this person well it turns out i was right <laughs> And this wasn't a situation where I felt like really smart for guessing the killer because sometimes I like it when I guess the killer. No, 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 no. This was like, mm, why did I guess the killer though? Because mm, I thought there was going to be like a twist at the end. I thought they were going to fake me out, make me think that I was right and it was going to be something else. No, mm -mm. it was just a little straightforward. Also, while there was like diverse representation in here, the actual quality of that representation i'm very skeptical about i'm just like not sold gender identity was used as a twist as a plot device which i don't love that that's like you know a person piece of personhood it's not really a twist to use as like a cheap thing like that i don't know and then the other characters were like kind of reacting to this revelation and referring to a trans character as well we found out she was a dude well she's actually a dude they tell on themselves and i'm unsure you know if that was verbiage that the author thought was appropriate or if it was like coming from a problematic character because the character was supposed to like have this problematic lens. But the character, other than that one thing, didn't really read like that. Like she read like a valley girl, but she didn't read as like unempathetic or like blind to other people's experiences. So I don't know. That was just like a weird little comment to me i didn't like it so i was gonna land on a 2.5 because it was so average but after that stuff like it just it really does not sit right with me um i'm gonna give it a two star so sorry to end the vlog on a bummer but we did have a couple good ones a couple like good fun times i would say out of all the books that i read for this vlog highly highly recommend no one needs to know by lindsay cameron that was by far the most fun the twistiest the most unpredictable book that i read in this video but i hope you guys liked seeing me read a couple new release thrillers probably a couple that you've heard of a couple that you haven't either way i hope you enjoyed the reviews and got a couple good recs don't forget to go down below and check out Magic Mind. You can get an entire month free with that promotion they have going on. My link and code are down below. And like this video if you liked it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And don't forget to go to therapy and read a book this week. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!